morning. And this is Allie Gondis. Allie, you want to go ahead? Yeah, hi, I'm Allie. I'm sick, so I don't have much of a voice, so I'm the purple squirrel team is uh, struggling a little bit. <laughs> so Carrie is saving the day here. But um, So I'm just going to start with a little bit of background information on who we are. So first of all, um, I've been in the recruiting industry for 16 years, um, background in finance, and have um, doing, been doing financial recruiting for 16 years, and then our firm has evolved into also doing uh, recruiting for HR, uh, operations, and sales and marketing leadership. Uh, we primarily work with small to mid-market companies. Um, most of our searches are here in the central U.S., but from time to time our relationships will take us outside of the, um, the central region, and we've done searches on both coasts. So that's a little bit about us. We are a retained search firm. Um, and you know, we can talk a little bit more about that later on in the presentation. Um, today we're going to cover information about, um, just based on our personal experiences and what we've seen in all the hires um, that we've assisted with, which we, we do about 50 searches a year. Um, so we've got some good data just within our own firm um, and the, you know, the history, but we'll also talk about um, some other research and findings that will help us in our discussion. Um, we would definitely love for this to be interactive, so if you have a question along the way or you know something uh, would promote some additional discussion, we're happy to, um, to stop and, and take a pause with any topic that we cover. Um, so today we're gonna talk about um, just some current trends that are occurring in the marketplace um, related to compensation. We're gonna talk about um, what data you should or could measure um, prior to launching a search and during the search. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the value of a uh, recruiting partner and the different types of recruiting partners that you can choose from, um, using data to drive alignment, and then also finding data at the offer stage. So as I'm sure we all know here in the room, there's a lot of trends that are impacting hiring right now um, and making it a very competitive hiring environment. So that's something that we see every day, and I would say 2019 is even more competitive than 2018 was from the standpoint of things like counter offers, um, the data that candidates are utilizing in order to consider offers. Um, in fact, I was on the phone with a candidate on my way over here who's evaluating an offer, and it is a very data-driven conversation. Um, as I'm sure you all know, things like healthcare, disparity of healthcare benefits from one company to the next, um, those things are playing a role. There's also the role of salary compression and companies that have an existing group of employees at a certain level who might be at a particular level and then there's the need to hire somebody from the outside and all of a sudden you have to pay more than what your existing salary or existing candidates at the same level might be making. Um, and kind of the challenges that companies face there. So um, just we're gonna talk a little bit about that but we also really have a lot of Detroit pride and we wanted in Michigan pride we want to talk about some of the things that are working in our favor here in Michigan. Um, yeah, I, I was supposed to be at a different conference today, but because of this health issue, I'm here, and there's people from all over the U.S. here in Michigan for this uh, Association for Corporate Growth Conference, and people are just amazed at um, what's going on here. So that's really exciting. Um, but here's some numbers, just talking about data to kick us off here. Um, in terms of talent attraction, we've got Things working in our favor, favor in terms of cost of living. So certainly um, there are candidates that are coming back here from larger metro cities and they're seeing a great in improvement in their quality of life based on the lower cost of living. So we're 11% uh, cost of living lower than um, the national average. Um, we have the most engineers here than any other state. Uh, of course we know all about the Great Lakes and the fact that our state um, touches four out of five of those. Um, something that we found really interesting is that there's 2,583 mobility related patents awarded in the last five years, so we are a leader in the technology space on that front. Um, we have the most commercial, industrial designer, commercial and industrial designers nationally. Um, nine out of ten of the largest aerospace and defense R&D firms are here. Um, we, at the time when we built this presentation, uh, Michigan ranked third in technology uh, job growth. And then finally, um, we've got 3,288 miles of freshwater shoreline. Um, there's actually a campaign, a lot of this came from the Choose Michigan campaign. So this is a little bit like our Pure Michigan, 
Um, this was something that is a um, statewide effort to uh, attract talent and try to reduce the talent shortage. So there's actually a website that highlights a lot of these um, numbers that was uh, developed by the state of Michigan. Um, so as we know, the national trends on um, wages are, um, the wages aren't growing as fast as some other factors or as fast as they should be. So there's small wheel rate, uh, wheel rate increases. And then, as I talked about initially, um, can't quality of life benefits are more and more important. Um, it's hard to measure some of those benefits with an actual dollar figure, but they weigh heavily on candidates' um, decision-making process. Um, definitely, candidates are looking at their all-in number, um, which could include you know, those remote work benefits, the compensation, the health, vacation, Flexibility overall. Tuition, you know, tuition reimbursement, just things that will make the all in package more appealing. Yeah, and then another thing, just as we head into the fourth quarter for anybody doing hiring, um, this is a, the most difficult time of year to hire, in our opinion, because you've got candidates who are, you know, have technically earned or accrued eight, you know, eight months of their bonus and now they might be walking away from that. So we see a lot of discussion around truing up, um, either via sign-on bonus or in, in a case that we're working on currently, our client is gonna provide six months of bonus eligibility even though our candidate is only gonna be there for three months. So things like this are, you know, they're, they're discussions we're having every day. Um, and then again, just we have a lot of uh, candidates that are making spreadsheets on the cost of benefits at one company versus the cost at another, and then companies having to uh, true up their offer in order to accommodate any difference there. In terms of numbers, you know, 45% of uh, global employers are still um, discussing that they're facing skill shortages. Uh, there was actually a recent um, article that Sherm published that said 75% of HR managers believe that there's a skill shortage for the positions they're trying to fill. Um, some of the things specifically, there was a mention in that term article of both um, technical skills and soft skills. So we know that the trades, um, construction, carpentry, those types of things are one of the hottest areas of skill shortage, um, but it's also in um, data analytics and some other in engineering and, and those types of real technical fields. On the soft skill front, um, one of the skills that a lot of HR managers saying uh, HR managers saying are missing is the ability to deal with ambiguity and problem solving and those types of things. So, um, most difficult roles to fill, you know, as you can see above, um, you know, there's those both skilled, there's accounting, finance, engineers. So it's across the board. Um, We're hearing a ton from clients like the skilled trade. And the truck drivers because they're right and everything. I mean, we hear it from every client that it's so hard to find people and, and have them stay because you know one company over is going to offer a dollar higher and they leave just like that. So yeah, and then the truck driver shortage I think is having a real impact on logistics on freight spend within companies. And so something that we're hearing from our clients um, when we're filling CFO positions is they need a CFO that can help them evaluate ways to bring down their their freight logistics spend um, because of these higher and higher costs that they're seeing in those areas. So, um, so obviously the trickle effect of the um, the difficulty has is impacting on the cost front as well. Um, you know, in terms of um, the management level job out outlook, you know, there's a lot of optimism in the market about um, new opportunities. Now, what's interesting is that 81% of management professionals said they would consider a new opportunity if one was brought to them. And so we get asked that question all the time, gosh, is it hard to fill positions? And I, I would say there's, there's challenges that you have to be aware of and kind of difficulties, but the talent is there, it's just a matter of having the right message for the talent. So there's no, le there's no less talent than there was several years ago, it's just the messaging and attracting that talent is the most important piece. Allie. Yeah, and, and the resources that you're using, you know, LinkedIn and networking, I mean, we're out in the community every single day building that network. Um, so for us, it's, you know, simple to kind of go out and we have that whole network that we can use. Um, but if you're just, you know, sitting and... and starting at zero, yeah, and then, your network is a little bit yeah. more difficult. Yep. Um, 
Um, the sectors with the most opportunities are, you know, no surprise, technology and healthcare, um, but we're seeing demand across a lot of different industry sectors. Yeah. So, um, I guess I would just be curious. What are your thoughts on what we've talked about so far, and then, do you, have you seen a candidate's market like?